All right, let's look at problem number six. Two ice skaters with masses of 50 kilograms and 75 kilograms are at the center of a 60 meter diameter circular rink. The skaters push off against each other and glide to opposite edges of the rink. If the heavier skater reaches the edge in 20 seconds, how long does the lighter skater take to reach the edge? So we have an ice rink with a diameter of 60 meters. Yeah, 60 meters. And they're both here in the middle. One of them weighs 50 and one of them weighs 75. Put the 75 over here, 50 over here. And they're going to push off from each other and they're going to go to opposite sides of the rink. We want to figure out if we know how long it takes for this guy, how long is it going to take for this other guy or girl. So the key to this is one, using conservation of momentum, but also using the kinematic equations that we have. And the kinematics isn't too difficult for this one because we have constant acceleration. That's the ice, so you push off and the velocity just stays constant all the way throughout. So let's say, or let's look at the, the kinematics. 20 seconds, so we have time. And I'm going to call everything for this guy, 75, I'm going to call T1, 20 seconds, mass 1, 75 kilograms. Uh, T2 is what we're looking for, mass 2 is 50 kilograms, and they're both going to travel 60 meters. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this guy travels negative 60 meters, so distance equals negative delta x. Delta x equals negative, sorry, not 60, 30, right? Half of that. 30 meters, and this one's going to travel a positive 30 meters to the right. And then the velocities. So the velocity for one, well, we don't really know it. For two, we don't really know it either. But we're going to be able to figure out the velocities from the distance and the time, and then connect them through the momentum. So how does the momentum work? Well, we have that initial momentum is final momentum. And our initial momentum, they're just sitting there, or standing there. And so that's zero. And our final momentum is going to be both of them moving. So it's going to be this V1 to the left, M1, V1. I'm going to keep it, both of them, I'm going to keep these as positive to the right. So I'm going to let the, if the sign comes out as negative, for that to mean that's going to the left. And M2, V2. So that's the momentum after the fact. So if I move one of these to the left, look at negative m1, v1 equals m2, v2. And because it's constant velocity, if you remember the kinematic equations, delta x equals v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. Well, if we have no acceleration, this is just delta x equals v0 t, and there's no point in writing v0, so v is equal to delta x over t. So I can replace the velocities with delta x over t. Negative m1, they both have, well, they don't have exactly the same delta x, right? Because this one's negative, this one's positive. Delta x1 over, okay, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna say delta x is 30, and I'm gonna write, This one is negative delta x, and this one is positive delta x over time t1 over time t2. And what we're looking for, to remind ourselves, is how long does it take the lighter skater to reach the edge, which is t2. So I wonder what t2 is. And delta x is going to cancel out because it's the same number. That's why I wanted to write them without the 1 and the 2. So I could just say, hey, can these cancel out? So I'm looking for T2, so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation to get T2 on this side. Notice over here, negatives cancel out. So I have M2. Over here, I'll divide by M1. And over here, I'll divide by M1. And T1, I'll multiply on both sides. It comes over here to this side of the equation. So overall, what I did was times M1 on both sides. Divide by M1 on both sides. Times T1 on both sides. And cancel the delta axis.
or times t2 on both sides. Anyway, this is the equation that we get. Put some numbers to it. M2 is 50, M1 is 75, and T1 was 20 seconds. So we get 13.3 seconds. That's all we have for the answer. Done.